cake. Marn has always had phonics teaching, so we're not doing anything um, new in that sense. Uh, phonics has always been an important part of, of the literacy. And we've also always had good foundation stage practice. So for us, it's been very useful to take part in a programme that's been much more systematic because we had a good basis to work from. In our school, we've got 60 children. Um, in reception, the classes are full, two classes of 30. And we've got two teachers, EAL support for about two days a week, and always at least a TA each. And everybody in the team is trained to teach phonics. This is what I've taken out of my handbag. This is cash. We call this cash. Money. So cash money. 20 money. pounds cash money. money. So exciting, isn't it? That's all the money from my bag. That's all I've got, OK? So we're going to think about the word cash. Now, what I need you to do, like you do every day, is to tell me all the words that you can think of that rhyme with cash. The phonics sessions themselves are 15 minutes in the day. So, you know, it, it's, it's short, frequent and often. And then the playing with sounds is linked to everything they do, which is what you would normally do as an early years practitioner anyway, playing in the water, getting them to make sounds like splish, splash, splosh. Stumble trip, stumble trip, stumble trip. Swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy, swishy, swashy. If the children are not hearing the sounds, if they're not using the sounds, they're not going to be able to write, they're not going to be able to, to read. Remember, this is the only one where you can stick your tongue out at the teacher. Want to see your tongue? Off you go. The concentration on sounds and words and letters <laughs> is, is there throughout everything they're doing, um, uh, which makes it much easier, I think, for the children. He was doing this, he was going <laughs> through the cabbages. Can you be a curvy caterpillar crunching the cabbages? Ready? Get your hands ready. Off we go. Mmm, they were delicious, those crunchy cabbages. The Rose Report was, was really interesting for me when it came out to, to look at what it said. And one of the main things that, that came across to me from it was that although um, Jim Rose is obviously very keen on synthetic phonics, that one of the important things he was saying is that it's not the type of phonics, but it's how systematically it's used within a school. The children are, come in and they do a phonics session in the morning, every morning. And uh, they, we basically start off the day like that. You know, we have some songs and that, and then we go into phonics. And um, we've got sort of groups of about half a class size and the children um, are at different stages. We've got stages one to five currently, and the children move between the stages. If we feel that the child's not coping at that stage, we'll move them down a stage. If we think they're excelling, which are currently at stage five, some of them are, we'll move them up a stage. And because we have such small groups, you know, 15 children, we really know the children well. It can be done in any area of the curriculum. When the children are studying mini beasts, they might be you know, searching for mini beasts that all begin with the first phoneme, the same first phoneme. You know, they're trying to write the names of the mini beasts by sounding out the words. At Marna, many of the children who come into reception speak little or no English. We all know English is a complex language, and um, it's mentioned in the Rose Report that it's important not to leave anything to chance, and I, I think that's exactly where we're at, that um, children are not going to just pick up and understand the issues within the language itself. But they need to be explicitly taught it, um, particularly because of their own language needs. What do we do if we don't know a word? What's the first thing we do? We blend them out. Before we blend it out, we sound, sound out. out the letters. We do we sound out the first phony first? Yeah. No, it's the first three, yeah? The children are really making progress in their reading because we're doing the guided reading more frequently 
We were originally doing it just once a week, but we've really put the effort in and made sure that every group reads twice a week. It may be during the day at some other time. Maybe the class are having a story and the children have some guided reading, or on Friday when they have music, some staff will stay down and do a guided reading. Yeah, you know, we try to fit it in so that everyone gets um, two sessions of guided reading and that it doesn't interfere with their other areas of learning. After we sound it out, imagine if we still don't know what the word is, what do we do? Look at the picture. Before we look at the picture, we read on, and then, and then if you still don't know what it is, you can... look at the picture. Yes, then you can look at the picture. Um, I can see my brown She is the Quite a lot of children who come into early years are actually just beginning to become English language speakers. So they need the experience of hearing what the sounds are so that they can actually begin to make the sounds themselves. So I'm going to say some words like our robot. You know, we do the robot every day. I'm going to say some words to you and I want you to tell me what the robot is saying by blending the sounds, okay? Listen. K ah, shh. M a sh mash L a sh flash Okay, so if I say to you cash, I want you to go k a sh and then write cash on your board and then I want you to underline each sound. Remembering to put one line under this diagram. Could everybody write the word wish? Wish. We did that this week. Sound it out, wish. There's been a sharp rise in the quality and the sophistication of the vocabulary that the children are using. Some of the children are not only the ones who are doing stage five phonics, even some of the children doing stage two, through modelling are actually starting to use terms like diagraph, triagraph, phonemes, just in when we're doing a shared class reading with the big book and they'll actually point out, look, that word has got a diagraph in it. And I'll say, oh, can you tell me what the diagraph is? And they'll say, yes, double O. And I'll say, in this word, what sound does it make? Short O or the long O sound, and they're able to tell me. When I'm reading a story to the class, some of them just go on and they read the whole sentence for me. You know, they, and they're looking around the environment, and they're saying, does that say home corner? Or does that say shop? You know, they're sounding everything out and really applying it to all the learning areas, and it's quite amazing. Ash, ash, dash. Duh, ash, duh. Rash. Rash. Well, I've always taught phonics um, in, in some way, but I think this approach is much more systematic. The children are flowing through a system. They're going from stage to stage or back a stage. Whereas before, I think I had the whole class just doing the alphabet over and over again and not really going anywhere with it. Well done. Mahi, can you come and trace the curvy caterpillar? No, Where are you going to start? At the head. At the head. Trace around his curvy back. And which way is his tail pointing? At the sun. At the sun. Well done. Some people, you know, have commented, oh, you know, you're not teaching them the alphabet names, you know, the letter names. And my reply is, well, if you're reading, if the children are reading a book and they read C-A-T, that doesn't sound anything like the word cat. But if they sound, they're sounding it out, cat, then they can actually hear what the word sounds like. When they're writing, if they want to write a word they don't know, they're not going to think of the letter names, they're going to sound it out. Dog, d, o, g. And they're going to link the sound to the letter formation that they've done in stage two and have a phonetically plausible attempt at writing a word. Mishkath, when I was watching Mishkath writing just now, he started his letter with a K, and K does make a K sound, so that was correct, what you wrote the first time. Well done. One little boy in the class this morning actually wrote one of the words starting with K, and it was, and it was the sound K, but he used a K, which was correct. It's a, just a, an, an error. And um, what I'd probably do is, it depends on the child's confidence all the time. You have to be, you know how teachers are always balancing this and that. So with him, I didn't want to damage his confidence. So I just said, well done, you've identified the right letter sound. You've got the next letter sound. He had the whole word except for the initial letter sound. And then 
that child is going to be in that group for quite some time, we'll be doing revisions, and then maybe next time he'll remember it started with a C and not a K. Some people might think that teaching phonics is a very dull thing to do and for young children it's going to turn them off their learning. That's not been our experience. We feel it's embedded very well in everything they do. Um, the teachers are very creative about how they go about teaching it. It's, um, it's very interactive. They're using lots of different skills. There's a lot of rhyme and singing. There's a lot of call and response work. The children are very actively involved in it. Could you write the word... Clash, that means come together and bash together, clash. You bump into someone in the playground, you clash with them, clash. That's worked really well for all of the children, both the boys and the girls. Um, and I think what it means is that they've become much more engaged in that process and become engaged at a very, obviously at a very early age, which is what we want to see. He has been, he's been crunching all the cabbages. That's what happens after he ate all the cabbages. He got really big and fat. And what did he spin after he ate all the cabbages? Cocoon, a cocoon. cocoon. What's the first phone in your cocoon? <coughs> the curvy caterpillar who crunched cabbages spun a cocoon. And then he turned into a, a cat. cat. No. no. Butterfly. 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 Mm. That doesn't begin with k, though, does it? No. What's the first phone in a butterfly? <laughs> It's not boring for the children at all because they're always advancing. They're not just sitting there day in, day out doing the letters. If they know that, they'll just move to the next stage. So it's never boring for them. They're always progressing. They're always moving somewhere. And so each day could be different for them. Or, you know, after a half a term, they'll be doing something different. So it's not boring for them at all. And I think, you know, for them to look around their environment, and, you know, we have a print-rich environment in the early years, they look around and they see all the print around them, they can read it, makes them feel empowered, and it's just great, it's really great. We don't push the children on unless they're actually ready for it. If they're not ready to move to stage two, then we provide them with activities they can continue on with, you know, to get them ready to, to move into stage two, get them ready to be able to hold a pen so they can start to form the letters correctly. A huge benefit for the children and for the school is that we're very, very clear about where they are in terms of their learning, their language and their learning at the end of their reception year, which means that they've got a really good head start when they move into year one. What we're hoping is that the, that the impact of that will be that we need to offer less intervention programmes higher up the school. We know, know now who the children are we need to pick up in year one. We know what their needs are. We know what we need to be looking at. And I don't think we've, we've ever before had that position. We've not been in that position to know enough about their learning needs at that point. And I think it will really benefit us and the children. They are much more successful learners. They're more motivated to read and write. It has a big impact on what they're doing. And, you know, it's just going to make it easier for the children as they progress through the school. What's that? One shiny wet nose, two big furry ears, two big goggly eyes. It's, it's a, a bear. bear! It's a bear! I know that there's a big debate about phonics and about foundation stage early years teaching. And for me, the issue isn't about either or. I think that both things, the creative teaching, the six areas of the curriculum, and the phonics teaching and the more systematic work can be done together hand in hand. What's it, what's, what I need to know is that something will work for my children and if it works then I'm going to use it. It's not about whether you're for or against one side of that argument and I think that that's what's really, really important for us. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Cake. Cake. Cat. Cat. Well done. Let's see if we can do it again a little bit faster.